Anybody ready for the word this morning? Yeah, me too. Me too. If you can, y'all put the scripture up for me. I'm going to read that and then we'll pray. Matthew chapter 12, 36 and 37 from the ESV. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give an account for every careless word they speak. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would anoint my lips of clay, Lord God, to teach, to say what you want me to say, to prophesy as I am commanded, so that we can see the dry bones live again. We can see death come to life. We can see hard hearts be softened. We can see minds be changed. Directions and trajectories be altered. Salvation come in Jesus' name. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Do what you want to do. I just want to say what you want me to say, Jesus. I just want to do what you want me to do. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, to be pleasing in your sight. Give us an ear to hear what the Spirit said. And let me speak only what the Spirit once said. In Jesus' name, come on, put your hands together. And give God a praise. Give God a praise as you take your seat. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. I done told y'all about fam. I done told y'all. We look cray cray. I told you. I told you. Come here, folks. Come up here. What in the world is going? What did I come into this morning? That's all right. You know, box of chocolate. You know, box of chocolates. You know, every my mom used to get chocolates. My mom used to get two things. I would try to sneak and get be chocolate. And then some of them, you know, it would be she got it from like you know my stepdad or a date. And I think I was slick going in and get the peanut clusters, but then they have strawberry inside it. Anybody ever made that mistake? You think you're about to get some caramel and get a mouthful of strawberry? Mm -hmm. Them and them blue can cookies. Those used to mess me up. Because you think it's cookies in there. Ain't no cookies in there. It's sewing equipment. There's needles and thread. And she put it in the kitchen like some cookies in there. I think she did that on purpose. Anyway, fam is a lot like that. <laughs> I'm a lot like that. You, you, think you, you think we're one thing and then all of a sudden you open us up and it's something completely different. But we all of that. That's why, I, that's why I love this church. Amen? This morning, this morning, I want to talk to you from the concept of intentional words. We've been talking about intentionality, what it means to be intentional. The Bible says, be careful how you live. Uh, the Bible says, as wise, not as fools. In other words, walk circumspectly, redeeming the time for the days at hand are evil. And so we have to live intentionally. We have to walk intentionally. And even we have to talk intentionally. Let me read Matthew chapter 12, 36 and 37 again before I expound on a few other scriptures. I tell you, again, this is ESV, just on the day of judgment, people, you, me, everybody we know, will give an account for every word we speak. Did you know that? Every word that comes out of your mouth, you're going to give an account. Every word, when they cut you off in traffic. <laughs> Come on, preacher, you ain't said that. Uh, when you go to pick up your groceries and they're not ready. Mm. Uh, when, you, when you go to your favorite restaurant and they done ran out of your favorite appetizer mm. BJ's mess me up didn't have my onion rings whatever <laughs> every word that you speak it says you will give an account for every careless word you speak for by your words your words you will be justified 
and by your words you will be condemned. Now the context of this scripture, because I want to make sure we have context, is that Jesus is rebuking the scribes and Pharisees. And he's talking to them about how they use words, but their heart is not right. There is a direct connection between the words we speak and our heart condition. The words we speak are directly connected. They paint a picture of what's in your heart. And the reason why he said your words are going to either give you life or condemn you, justify you or condemn you, is because what your words show is that your heart is either right with God or it's not. So my question is, what are you saying this morning? What words are you speaking when nobody hears you? I ain't talking about when you're at church. You know, when we at church, we speak the right words. Hallelujah. Glory, Father. Praise Almighty. God bless you, sister. You do the, you do the, come here, BJ. We do the two hands, handshake, you know. God bless you, brother. <laughs> Be careful how you do that. It look a little funny. But anyway, but it's when you're by yourself. It's when can't nobody hear you or you think nobody can hear you. Uh, it's when you're going through tr struggles and trials and tribulations. It's when you ain't got as much money as you thought you did. And you went to the store and bought stuff. <laughs> uh, anybody ever made that mistake? You thought you had it? Found out you didn't? Come on. Uh, it's when somebody make you mad. When somebody do you wrong. Watch this. Even when you know you are right. How do you talk when you know you are right? Ooh, because some people, when they right, they get real wrong. Huh? See, because just because you are right, don't make you right. You, you might actually, factually be right in the argument, but because of how you say what you say, you end up wrong. The Bible says, you're going to be judged by every word, careless word, argon in the Greek, careless Lacking attentionality that you speak when we lose patience with people, God, God is taking it down. Uh, here's a spiritual truth that you probably know, but I want to remind you of. Yes, your words do matter. Your words do matter. Oh, I was just playing. Your words still matter. Well, I was upset. Your words still matter. I was tired last night. Your words still matter. I had just got paid. Your words still matter. And not only do they do damage to people, but God is paying attention. And one of these days, you are going to stand before the creator of the universe and have to give an account for every word you have spoken. So I want to encourage you as I continue on in this message this morning, be intentional with your words. Hmm? Be intentional with your words. I want you to consider words like your bank account. Mm -hmm. Just imagine that words are like your bank account, that when you speak a negative or faithless word, it is a debit. But when you speak in faith and in righteousness, it is a credit to your account. I want to know how many of us would be broke this morning because we're always speaking... <laughs> At least she honest. Always speaking negativity, unrighteousness, unholiness unfruitful word would you be in the red with your words or would you be in the black because of what you say the bible says let your words be seasoned with grace all the words that come out are supposed to produce good things they're supposed to build up and not tear down if you call yourself a christian what words are you saying 
How are you saying it to people? Amen. It's not just about what you say. It's how you say it as well. I'm telling you, y'all, when you get frustrated, you can say some stuff and don't really mean what you're saying. Mm? Let, me, let me give you a practical example. Lighten the mood. Huh? Me and my wife. What's up, girl? I see you looking at me. I understand. And I'm looking at her, too. Amen. Uh, my, my wife, when me and my wife, holy as we are, when we get into vigorous debates, as I discussed last week, we got a few little words that we say to each other that don't really mean what we're saying. Hmm? When you go to the hood, there's some words that people say that they ain't really saying what they're saying. You got to be able to hear what people really saying. Uh, me and my wife, whenever we get frustrated with each other, she'll say a phrase to me, or I'll say a phrase to her. She say, you want to do X, Y, and Z? I'm going to talk about me. And I'll say these words. I don't care. I don't care. Huh. First of all, you're lying. Because you do care. But because you are angry, you allow your anger to move you out of righteousness and you begin to speak untruths. I don't care. Uh, or, or she'll say she'll say this to me whatever you want to do mm. y'all know that ain't true whatever you want to do uh, or, or those one words like all right some dangerous words my point is y'all is that you're gonna have to give an account for your words and you want to make sure that when you speak your words are in agreement with the will of God and not your flesh here's the first point I want to make to you this morning and then we're going to go to the book of Isaiah 55 10 and 11 here's the first point I want to make to you God does not waste his words and neither should we made in the image of God supposed to be full of the spirit Christians and yet we say things wasting our words oh, that's not the will of God let me let me show you what I mean by God doesn't waste his words Isaiah 55 10 and 11 here I'm reading the King James Version it says for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither but watereth the earth and maketh it to bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater so shall my word be that goes out of my mouth it shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. God says, my word are not wasted. When I speak, stuff happens. You want to know why some people are taken seriously while others are not? Some people talk a whole lot and don't get nothing done. Then some people ain't got to say much at all and everything start moving. Huh? That's the thing about the lion. The lion don't have to roar for the other animals to know it's a lion. All the lion got to do is show up and all the other animals get nervous because they recognize that when the lion is ready, something going down for real. Words. If you're a wise person, you don't speak a whole lot of nonsense. You measure your words. You're careful with your words because you recognize the impact, the potency of words. Huh? We recognize. Now, we live, in, this is Texas. Second Amendment. Can I get a whoop whoop from all the Second Amendment folks? See that? See that? Don't come here playing. I just told you. You're out of whoop whoops. That means it's dangerous. <laughs> but, but imagine your words are like bullets. Huh? Imagine the words are like bullets. When a bullet hits a target, it cannot be repaired. I don't care if you suture it back together. I don't care if you do plastic surgery. There will always be a sign, a symptom that that thing occurred. It's the same way with your words. I don't care how much somebody says they are okay. I forgive you. When you say something not in the will of God and it causes damage, it will be there. 
When you get harmed, your, your body aches. You learn how to cope with it. Hmm? You learn how to cope. My body hurts all the time. And I've learned to cope with it. Uh, I play, I do, I do, well, I, I was about to say I play basketball, but listen, I played basketball. I don't want to lie and say I play in the present tense, praise the Lord. But I, I, you, I still do things. It doesn't mean that I don't have pain. People, people can function after you say what you said, but it still has an impact. The, the, the marriage can continue on, but the words that you have spoken still have an impact on your husband. Huh? When you tell him he don't make no money. Mm, somebody laughing. Huh? When you, when, you, when you tell her her food nasty. Mm. When you say you just like your mama, you just like your daddy. I can't stand. Yet the words still hit. And they still cause damage. I don't care how many dates you go on after that. I don't care how much you say you have forgiven and you may have forgiven. You just haven't forgotten. Amen. Let me show you the impact to, to drive home my point. Let's go to the book of James chapter 3 verse 5. And here I'm reading the New Living Translation. James chapter 3 verses 5 through 8. To drive home my point about the impact of words. James chapter 3 verses 5 through 8 it says in the same way the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. Wars have been started because of words. People have lost their marriages because of words. Children have taken their lives because of the words of their parents. Students have dropped out of school because of words. Friends are now enemies because of words. People don't come to church anymore because of words. I don't care that they're just words. The words we speak carry a lot of weight. So you got to be careful what you say and how you say it. Verse 6, and among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. I hear some husbands saying, amen, preacher. <laughs> it is a whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. This is the impact. It can set your whole life on fire. For it is set on fire by hell itself. The impact of your words. Here's, here's the second point I want to make to you. A word, a word can impact one's destiny. A word can impact somebody's forever. We talked about being an intentional witness last week. And this is the reason why our words matter. What's going on, LaDon? Good to see you, baby. Oh, it's my brother right there. So I was trying to explain the importance of being a witness because your words can change somebody's destiny. Hmm? I remember when I used to get in trouble, man, when I used to do what I used to do. Thank God for change. I remember going to, I can't remember what the name of the JJAEP down there in Colleen, jail for kids. Huh? And I, I remember getting put in there when I was 12 or 13. I started acting up soon as mama left church. Parents, parents, the house of God is important for the development of your children's spiritual well-being. My mother, thank God for my mom, she brought me to church, introduced me to Christ, so I'm not blaming her. But when we left church, I began to act a fool. And I ended up going to baby jail. <laughs> Best way I can describe it, I'm sorry. And I remember I was in there and there was this man, because I went in there with an attitude, and this, you know, you got to be tough. So I'm fighting, just that's what I did, fighting. And I remember one guy told me, he was, he was doing my, if you understand anything about it, you know, you go take a shower, they give you powder and all that other crazy stuff. And so he put in my powder shower, shower powder together. <laughs> and he said to me, you'll be back, Mitchell. 
as I was getting ready to leave, the words he spoke to me, the words he spoke over me were, you'll be back. Not, hey, young man, get your life together. Stay out of this place. It was, you'll be back. Now, I never went back to that place. I graduated. <laughs> Got an advanced degree later on. Amen. The impact of our words matter. Amen. Let's go to the book of Matthew. And I'm just going through all these scriptures because I want you to see what the word says about our words. Anybody catch that? Matthew chapter 12 verses 34 through 37. Words reveal what's in our heart. Verse 34. I quoted this earlier. O generation of vipers, how can ye be in evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you, going back to the original scripture, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Out of the abundance of the heart. What, is, what does it mean by the abundance? When you talk about abundance, you're not talking about just enough. You're talking about the excess, the extra, the overage. So when you begin to say things that are not in line with God's word, that means in your heart there is an abundance of things that are not in line with God's word. It's not just a slip up. It's not just a happenstance. You have an abundance of unnecessary and unuseful words in your heart. For out of the abundance, what do you mean by out of the abundance? It means that there was so much of what you said in your heart that your body couldn't contain it and it spilled out of your mouth. So when you get angry and you say what you say, it has been building in your heart for a long time. You may have been able to keep your words back for a while, but the Bible tells us in the book of James that you cannot control that tongue. Hmm? It's like fire. Sets things on fire, ruins things. Amen? That's what the Bible's saying. It's for out of the abundance of the heart. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 18 and 21, for death and life are in the power of the tongue. When, when you look at that word power, it's not talking about power the way you think of it. It's really saying it's in the hands of. Death and life are in the hands of the tongue. That means that the tongue dictates what goes on with one's life. Words are important. Amen? Trying to paint a picture. I want you to understand why words are important. So the reason why I ask you what is your heart condition is because what's in your heart is eventually going to come out and it's going to show everybody what you're really about. Here's the, la the next point I want to make to you. Our hearts are the gatekeepers of our words. So the Bible says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Our hearts are the gatekeepers. It, it, it is the manifestation. It will show forth what's really in you. So your words are just the overage of what's in your heart. Hmm? Now, some people I know, some people I know, y'all, they, they kind of go back and forth, back and forth. Amen. And let me show you what the Bible says in the book of James. You don't have to go there. I'm just going to read it. James chapter 3, verses 9 through 12. Sometimes it praises, talking about our mouths, our words, our tongue. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father. And sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Hmm. Does a spring of water bubble out both fresh and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No, and you can't draw out fresh water from a salty spring. Anybody in here salty? Someone get a little salty? Huh? Are you a little salty? 
Hey, you got to be careful with that. Because we're supposed to be bearers of fresh water. Amen? And I'm almost done. Look at that, child. Y'all going to get out of here early. So then, if we're going to be intentional, what are we supposed to do with our words? Since we're not supposed to waste our words. You said, don't waste your words, Pastor Keith. And our words have weight. And we're going to be given, we have to give an account for our words. And they can change the trajectory of somebody's life. What should we do with our words? I, I'm glad you asked that question. Let's go to the book of Psalm 34. You know it, but I'm going to read it. Psalm 34, verse 1. This is what David said. I will bless the Lord at all times. You want to know what you're supposed to do with your words? Here's a good example. Bless the Lord at all times with your words. If you want to know what to say, bless the Lord with your words. Amen. If you want to know what you're supposed to say, give God the glory with your words. Build somebody up with your words. Magnify the Lord with your words. Tell somebody about Jesus with your words. Give your testimony with your words. Edify somebody's soul with your words. So what am I, what am I supposed to say? You're supposed to say what the Lord wants you to say. Even when that's not what you want to say. See, y'all, we have a problem because we choose our own desires over that of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is telling you, and you know he's saying, don't you say that. Come on, raise your hand if you've ever experienced it. Come on, you, you heated, you hot, you mad, and you know you're right. Come on, come on, you know you're right. And you're about to say it, you got it loaded. You're like, ooh, baby. <laughs> Ooh, I've been taking a list, making a list, checking it twice, and you just said the wrong thing. It's about to come out now. And the Holy Ghost say, don't you say that. Don't you say, but you know you're right. You know you're right. You just spoke to me wrong. You just said it too many times. And the Holy Ghost say, don't you say that. Don't you say that. And then you say it anyway. Because God, I just had to let him know how I felt. And while I love the Lord with my whole heart, which is a lie, by the way, I got to tell him how I feel. So Holy Ghost, take a break. Do you understand what you have just done? You have told the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, sit down and shut up. It's my time to speak. Oh, you get it now, right? Sit there and shut up, Jesus. This ain't, this ain't concerning you. This is, it's my time now. Huh? And then when you say what you said, the enemy comes and says, I thought you were a Christian. Played you like a fiddle. Played you well. And all of your co-workers come and say, I thought that dude was a Christian. <laughs> hypocrite. 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 Because you couldn't control your words. Mm, this is why the fruit of the spirit, temperance, is so important. Amen. It'll help you keep your mouth closed when everything on the inside of you want to say everything you're thinking. Hmm? Be intentional with your words. Don't tear down. Build up. Amen. What's the point of tearing stuff down? At a certain point, there's nothing else left to tear down. It's just you left with a bunch of rubble. And that's where you're going to have to live. In your house, in your house, if you always saying stuff to your spouse, you got to live there. Why would you break that person down? You got to lay next to them every night. Why don't you speak right words to them and build them up so that when you go home to lay down, they can then begin to encourage you back. Hi. Huh? You didn't marry them? I'm on, I'm on marriages. I'm sorry. I'm going to stay there because I feel like the Holy Ghost is talking to me. Huh? You done married them? You done stood up in front of everybody in your dress or your suit or whatever, your jeans and your t-shirt, whatever it was. And before God, I do solemnly. And the same person that you have now given the keys to your entire life by the law, you're going to tear them down with your words? See, see, you got to understand, you, when you speak to your spouse, you're making deposits that you're going to have to go and withdraw later on. So I'm going to encourage my wife, and I'm going to tell her how beautiful she is, and I'm going to tell her how much I like her. 
Not just love her, I like her. Oh, y'all don't get the difference? You ain't got to like everybody you love. I got some folks I love with my whole heart but could not like them any less. Huh? Like if, if we were not family, I guarantee we wouldn't be friends. So I speak because one of these days, it's so good. The Bible says it's good. Uh, how good are words spoken in due season? When, I, when I'm discouraged, I can then go to my spouse and withdraw when she tells me, babe, everything is going to be all right. Huh? When she says, you, 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 you anointed. Huh? When I don't feel anointed, she'll say, baby, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Huh? This is the reason why our words matter. Amen? Even with your family members, you got brothers, you got sisters. Don't take them for granted. You know how you know you're taking them for granted because you say anything to them. You speak to them the way you wouldn't speak to your boss. That's how you know you take people for granted. So I can't say that to my boss because I want my check. I want my position. I want my prestige. But you, you got to be here. So I'll just talk to you however I want to. And I'll see you tonight. What should I do with my words? Psalm 9, 1 and 2. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praises to thy name, O Most High. That's what we're supposed to do with our words. Here's the next point I want to make to you. The next point I want to make to you. Our words are inspired and in agreement with either the Lord or our enemy. So do not allow your circumstances to cause you to speak in a way that is inconsistent with your character. Listen, y'all, there, there are no original inspirations. They're either coming from the Lord or your enemy. There is no middle ground. So when you speak a word, if it is not in agreement with God, who is it in agreement with? I can't hear nobody. The enemy. Why would you get in agreement with your own enemy? Why would you allow the enemy to take ammunition from you to use back on you later on? Got to be careful with your words. Got to be careful with your words, y'all. Let me, let me show you what I mean. In the book of Job, you don't have to go there. In the book of Job chapter 2, Job has gone through some misfortunes, some terrible misfortunes in his life. And while Job is there suffering, his wife, now the Bible says Job would not curse God. This is what the Bible says that his wife came to him and said, got to be careful. His wife said to him, are you still trying to maintain your integrity? Curse God and die. See, y'all, that's what the enemy wants from you. He don't even care whether you live or die. He just wants you to curse God. He wants you to get out of your character and curse God. Some people, you, let me give you another example. Some people don't really want to fight you. They don't really want it with you like that. They just want you to get out of character so that they can tell everybody you're a hypocrite. They want to bait you out of character so that they can then justify their own actions. Don't let them play you like that. Don't let people, cause I used to tell folks at my job, when folks would talk crazy to me on my job, I would say, I ain't letting them control my money. That's my check. I'm not about to let your words control my check. If you want to cuss and act crazy, go right ahead. I'm going back to my desk and get my check next Friday. I'm not letting nobody dictate my, uh, that's okay, that's just me. That's the way I feel. Verse 10, but Job replied, you talk like a foolish woman. Should we accept only good things from the hand of God and never anything bad? So in all this, Job said nothing wrong. When you are pressed, when you are squeezed, when you are tempted, when you are tried, Still be intentional with your words. T take a minute. Before you speak, take a minute 
and begin to calculate the damage that's going to be done with the words you're about to say. Huh? Sometimes I get text messages from people. I, I, I'm talking about me and my wife again. She's probably going to tell me, stop using me in all your sermons, man. It's like, you married me, girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> me and my wife be talking. Mm -hmm. And I say something, or she'll say something. Mm -hmm. And I have to go back and correct it, have to go back and fix it. Mm -hmm. To make sure that the damage is not too bad. Got to make sure that I didn't just ruin something. When I was growing up, I don't even know if I made my point, but y'all love me anyway. <laughs> when I was growing up, they used to sing a song in church. I command my mouth to praise the Lord. Anybody remember that song? I command my hands to praise the Lord. I command my mouth to praise the Lord. Well, if you don't, you better learn it. You better command your mouth to praise the Lord. You better tell your mouth, mouth, we're going to say what the Lord want us to say. We're going to do what the Lord want us to do. We're not going to speak wrong words. We're going to speak right words. Because if not, you're going to have to eat the fruit of your own words. Amen? The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 18 and 20, Wise words satisfy like a good meal. The right words can bring satisfaction. Then to 21, I'll go back over this. The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap its consequences. Be intentional with your words. Make sure that you don't just speak thoughtlessly, foolishly. Walk circumspectly so that God can be seen in your life. So that your witness is not ruined. So that you build up instead of tearing down. So that there is a kingdom that is moving forward because of you and not regressing because of you. Finally, let me leave you with the, just a few scriptures to let us know how important words are. God's words are important and so ours should be too. What does the Bible say about God's word? Heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall remain. Huh? My word shall not return to me void. These, this is what God says about his word. Jesus said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. In the book of Psalm, he says, how shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed to the word of God. The word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The word is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. In the beginning was the word. This is what the word says about the word. How important the word was. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. Hmm? And the word became flesh. What does that mean? This is the last thing I say because I got 35 seconds and I'm on time. Praise the Lord, I'm on time. And the word became flesh. That means that everything that God wanted to communicate with man was in the person of Jesus Christ. Everything that God wanted you to know about himself and about you was in the person of Jesus Christ. He was the living embodiment of everything God wanted to say. That's the reason why words are so important. Amen? God's words are important, shouldn't be wasted. Your words are important and shouldn't be wasted. Put your hands together for Jesus this morning. I'm done. Be intentional with your words, saints. Be intentional with your words. Don't play with them. Don't shoot them from the hip. Don't speak them carelessly. They can have an impact on somebody's life for all eternity. You want a better marriage? Speak right words. You want to feel better at your job? Speak right words. I speak to people all the time. I say, good morning. How you doing? They say, I can't complain. You know what I tell them? 
won't do you any good. You can complain. It just won't do you any good. Amen? Brother Joyner, can you go grab that item off my desk and bring it to me? I said I was done. But I just want to leave y'all with this example. Let me show y'all something. Watch this, y'all. Now, most of us, many people, mm -hmm, many people, when the Lord does something good for you, when the Lord wakes you up, thank you, thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning. Blesses your children. Thank you, God, for keeping my kids. That's exactly the point. When it comes to praising the Lord with our words, we real quiet. But when it comes to complaining, this is what we do, y'all. Oh, they talking bad to me on my job. Oh, I ain't got no money. My boyfriend ain't treating me right. The church ain't no good. Huh? What am I going to do? We get on Facebook and we broadcast all the negative words to the whole world. But when it comes to the right words, the words to bless God, the word to please God, the word to help somebody, we get real, real quiet. The Bible says they overcome, we overcome by a testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Amen? I just had to show y'all that example real quick. So hopefully you'll be thinking about it when you go home, about how loud you're supposed to be with praise of the Lord. Stand to your feet with me this morning. Bullhorn, bullhorn when we complaining. Nobody knows. Ah, oh, preacher. Who's that? How you doing? Ah, oh, just. Ah. Ah. And I'm standing there and I'm saying, You made it. You made it. Don't you get it that somebody didn't make it? But you made it. God left you alive for you to complain. No. God left you alive for you to give Him praise. Even in the midst of your struggle, give him praise. That's what you do with your word. Amen? Amen? Don't waste them. Don't waste your words. Be intentional with your words. Build your wife up. Build your husband up. Build your children up. Build your church up. Huh? I'm not, listen, I'm about to tell y'all right now. I'm not above it. Call me and tell me I'm doing a good job, please. <laughs> if you feel that way. If you feel, now, if you don't, Keep it to yourself. But if you, just don't text me. Just go, go silent. If you feel different, I will understand. But for those of you that might feel something different, let me know. It helps. Amen? And I'll do the same for you. 